Hi everybody, it's Kelly Russell, the Rock Your Joy Coach. Thank you so much for being with me today and welcome to my channel. So my topic for this week is looking at our addiction to guilt and blame. And literally really thinking about it like it is a, a drug or alcohol, a substance that we're addicted to or a behavior, a behavioral pattern that we are addicted to and if we look at you know those kinds of addictions that show up in our lives in the world as being something that we are doing to medicate ourselves right something that we are doing to try and reduce pain that we feel in some way and of course it blows up in our face because then we end up causing ourselves more pain uh, eventually in when we are addicted to something um, by the way that we that, that it gets control of us and then we end up giving it a place of power in our lives and ultimately it can really you know ruin things for us and you know people talk a lot in the 12-step programs about hitting a place of rock bottom where they've lost seemingly everything or certainly a lot of things that were meaningful to them in terms of relationships, family, their jobs, homes, their health, their money, et cetera, whatever. And it's, and it's been because they, they were unable to um, control how they gave their power over to something that was going to be destructive to them, but that they were seeking in it actual, um, you know, a way of feeling better, you know, whether that whether it was a an altered state of consciousness, whether it was uh, some kind of a feeling, sort of feeling of filling up something that felt like it was empty whether it was kind of a rush or just, you know, a distraction from how they were feeling in their, you know, in their state when they weren't using or, or engaging in that behavior, whatever that was, it was, it was not going to bring them, you know, what they thought it was going to bring them. It wasn't going to make them happy and it wasn't going to be an escape. If anything, it was only going to be a temporary escape. But then the problem is that, you know, once once you engage in that addiction and then you, you know, you you're you come out of it or whatever, you know, you, it, it's later on. And now you actually feel even worse and guilty. And so you feel worse than you did before. Or so then that feeds the addiction and you end up engaging in it and using again right and this is exactly what we do with blaming other people and seeing other people as the cause of our unhappiness seeing other people as having any kind of responsibility or ownership for why our lives aren't working out or you know why we can't be at peace or in joy and whether it is something that we are holding someone in blaming guilt for that happened in our childhoods that had to do with parenting or caretaking, whether it was abuse that happened to us or we were bullied or whether it's something that happened later in life and we're holding a partner responsible or one of our kids or you know, somebody at our workplace or a circumstance that happened, something that's going on in our body. You know, I mean, it's just the, there's a myriad of, of quote unquote drugs and, you know, addictions that we can engage in. I mean, it takes so many different forms in the world, but yet it's all really one thing. It's seeing anything outside ourselves as being the cause of our happiness or our unhappiness and seeing ourselves as victims and that is what the addiction is is seeing ourselves as victims of anyone or anything in the world and so the recovery 
is it's very similar to the 12 step program recovery, right? So it is first recognizing that your life has become unmanageable. It's re realizing that like, uh, I'm at like a rock bottom place here. Stuff isn't working. I'm not happy. You know, there's conflict everywhere and you know, things aren't working out. My, you know, things, things aren't going right. I'm not at peace. It sucks, etc. And it is having the willingness to turn your life over to a higher power. And the higher power in A Course in Miracles, you know, is the Holy Spirit. And so turning your life and your, your will over to the Holy Spirit in The Course in Miracles means asking for a miracle and the miracle is a shift in perception from fear to love and that the addiction is constantly choosing with fear and thinking that it is going to make us feel better that it's going to get us out of the state of mind that we're in that it's it's going to do exactly what you know we hope whatever the substance or behavior is going to do that we're addicted to that it's going to transform us and bring us relief and put us you know make us happy and and give us some kind of like raise us up or or alter our state of consciousness or whatever it is when it isn't all it's going to do is just make us feel shitty and then send us into a guilt spiral because we engaged in the addiction and then that will lead to us then continuing to engage in the addiction to try to make us, ourselves feel better and get relief from the guilt. And it's just, just this unending cycle. And, and so the equivalent of, you know, the, going to the meetings and the equivalent of working the steps in A Course in Miracles is learning and practicing the Course in Miracles version of what it calls true forgiveness. And true forgiveness is saying, you know, I forgive you and then fill in the blank of whatever, you know, whatever drug of choice, whatever form y your addiction is taking of whoever and whatever it, you think is to blame for this particular you know, time of your unhappiness saying, I forgive you because there's nothing to forgive. I remember that I am dreaming an illusion here. I remember that I'm making this up with my ego mind and I am making the decision to, for, to, that I don't want to keep doing this. I'm making the decision to, to ask, to have my mind changed, to see this differently. I'm forgiving myself for making up this, you know, this false idea in the first place for, for being in this dream. And I ask spirit to take this from me. I surrender it to spirit and ask to be healed. That is, that's, that's the miracle. And there aren't 12 steps to it in A Course in Miracles. There's literally one, well, there are literally four steps in that process that I just went through. And it's literally, it is making the decision to give it over to spirit, to ask for the miracle, to practice forgiveness, and then to release it. And, and so, you know, what happens in, 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 we're doing an intervention on ourselves when that happens, you know, that is what we are doing. We're intervening, we're intervening and saying, just like we do with people that we love that are experiencing an addiction to say, I love you so much. I care about you so much. I want you to be happy and I want you to have a great life. And, but what you're doing here, what you are willingly engaging in is, is impacting me. And I don't want to keep participating in it. And so that's why I am, I'm writing this, this love letter to you. That's why I'm participating in this, in this intervention is I, I know there's something better for you 
and I'm letting you know that as much as I love you, I don't want to keep doing this with you. I want to keep engaging in this in the way that it is. And so we do that intervention and we, we turn our will over to that higher power, the Holy Spirit, and we, we start, you know, going to the meetings. We, we have our, and when, when I say going to meetings, I'm literally saying the meeting, the meeting is between us and that elder brother and guide and way shower, um, Jesus from A Course in Miracles, who is, who, who helps us to see things differently, helps us to reframe th things for us, brings us the miracle. But we do have to ask, you know, just like, you know, we, we, Jesus is not going to interfere. Holy Spirit is not going to interfere with our life and hijack us and force us to confront our addiction and engage in recovery just any more than it would be cool for anyone in our lives to force us to go to a 12-step meeting you know or force us to go to a rehab i mean i know that that is sometimes what happens with people but unless the person is really in a place where they are willing to see that they are causing the problem themselves, that it isn't someone outside of themselves um, that's, you know, that's making them unhappy and making them have to use a substance or engage in a behavior in order to be happy. You know, when somebody is going to throw you in their car and make takes you to a meeting or takes you to a rehab or, you know, does something like that, if it's not, your will that's making the decision it oftentimes it won't stick so spirit isn't gonna throw us in the back of the car and <laughs> take us to forgiveness and make us practice it but when he hears us saying i'm ready i want to do a better. i want to have a better way i want to see this differently I, I want the miracle. I'm asking for it. What I'm doing isn't working. This is my rock bottom. I'm ready. Um, no matter how many times we say it, he's there with the answer and he's going to help us to shift that perception from fear to love. And, and when we do, you know, when we do pursue that addiction and we do engage in that behavior of blaming and judging and criticizing and holding someone else in in guilt in, as to why we are unhappy and why we can't have the life we want and we're seeing that as as the reasonable answer that is like asking for help with the addiction from the pusher from the owner of the casino or from the wine shop or you know from the the store where we're you know, engaging in our shopping addiction or whatever it is in the, in the sense that whomever is benefiting from us being in the addiction and staying in the addiction is not going to be the one that is going to help us get out of it. And so, you know, asking for the answer from the higher power, the, the higher power is the higher power for a reason. It, it's not because it's in control of us. It's because it actually knows what the best thing is for us. It's coming from a place of love. It's coming from a place of healing and a place of, of true, true recovery, right? And so it's, it's the Course in Miracles. That's the answer to this addiction to guilt and blame and holding others in a place of ownership and responsibility for our unhappiness. So that is my message for you today. If you are finding yourself in a place where you think that anyone or anything or any situation is responsible for why you aren't having the life you want or why you're not living the happy dream or, you know, experiencing love and peace and joy, then you're addicted and it's time to go to recovery. So 
If you like this video, please share it. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, uh, please click the link below and subscribe. I'm here every week talking about the practical application of A Course in Miracles. And if you'd like to hear more on the subject of forgiveness and how what a miracle it can be in your life and how its application can change every aspect of your experience. There are a couple of free programs that you can um, download that to which there are links below as well. And if this is something that you notice in your life that is a theme for you, that you are addicted to blaming other people and holding them in, in guilt into why you can't be happy or have the life you want, you also may consider booking a discovery call for me, which is free. It is a coaching session in which we address what what's happening in your life and uh, in order to see whether coaching with me, one-on-one -on -one coaching could be something that would be a solution for you. So you can check that out as well. And thanks again for joining me. I'll see you next week. I love you.